What's up, everybody? It's the homie Truth Teller, the street reporter. And um, kind of want y'all to take a stroll with me, kind of see how beautiful and dope it is, you know, out here downtown. Uh, I always show this area because normally in Chicago, there's so many stories about killings, murders, you know, shootings, blickings, people dying. You never get a chance to really see this place and how dope it is, especially in these areas. But I want to tell you something, though. You know, I kind of find it shameful that you got to come down here just to kind of be a little safe. And you ain't all the way safe, but it's safe. One thing I learned about this area is, you know, like I always say in previous blogs, the violence don't stay down here, but it'll come down here and visit, you know, in this area. Because you got to have a lot of money to live over here. This is where all the millionaires and shit live at. All the sports players and people who kind of famous celebrities and shit tend to move down here. So I kind of think this is a dope area out here. Another thing that I noticed about uh, this place is the rent is real high down here. A lot of hotels down here. But the people who live down here, you know, they pay a lot of money to stay in them type of high rise buildings and shit. The rent be like. $2,700 $2,700 a month up to $100,000, you know, to be in these places and shit like that. And it's crazy because people have to spend that money to kind of be safe. A lot of people don't know that. You're not really paying um, just because it just looks that nice. Because even though this is a nice neighborhood, a lot of them apartments is rinky dink as hell. They small as hell. You be paying $3,600 a month for a one bedroom down here, you know, but... It keeps the violence away. You're able to come down here, go to your stores and shit like that, and don't worry about being shot. Now, here go the thing. Now, all the time, like I say, sometimes you have to worry about that shit, but you don't got to worry about it just staying here because it'll leave so much police presence. When you paying taxes like that and money like that, people care about these neighborhoods. But uh, back to the interviews and shit, there's been a lot of shit going on in the drill culture. Lately, a lot been going on with, like, Blood Money brother, he kind of snapped going off on Bezu. You know, he kind of feel like Bezu sneak this Blood Money in the song with Boss Top. I listen to the song. I mean, I think you could. I mean, you could come with that angle. It kind of do feel like that a little bit. But it's a piece of me that's not sure if that was a diss record. But, you know, Blood Money brother took it as a diss record. He didn't spoke out on it. Bezu actually spoke out and said he wanted this record, but he don't give a fuck. If somebody wants to smoke, they can get some smoke. He gonna be in Iraq soon. So, you know, Bezu kind of got the tough vibe right now. Uh, I actually had a chance to talk to Blood Money, brother. You know, I spoke to him. Our schedule was wasn't on point this weekend, so I wasn't able to, uh, you know, link that up. Our schedules didn't really mix, so it was hard for us to get that done today, you know? So I talked to him. We were supposed to do an interview this week. I wasn't able to get it done, but I spoke again. We're going to try to get that interview out maybe next week or something like that. Because, you know, he feel like he want to speak about that. And I do think that's strong in the culture about hearing names and songs. Whether it's not, uh, whether it's just a mistake or people think they heard it. I still think that's strong in the culture to show you how, you know, people don't like them names being in songs and shit. I also had the opportunity to speak with Fat Shorty Daddy, too. Pretty sure y'all know who Fat Shawty is. I think Fat Shawty is deep in the culture because he one of like eight people that became famous in the drill culture who don't got rap songs. So I think that's going to be a dope interview. His dad let me in on a lot of information. You know, his dad like an OG out here in the city. Big Dale, he like an OG. So that's a dope interview. He had a lot to speak on that was dope. I actually had a chance to speak to Dank too, man. A.B. Dank. Uh... He dope. He got a song right now that's called Still Alive. He was shot. Somebody tried to kill him. Instead of crying and rolling up and being sad about it, he made a song about it, you know? And the shit did like 100,000 views in a couple of days. We talked about it. I told him, do you feel like the ops going to slide back on you after hearing that song? You know, and we spoke on a lot of shit, man. So we got some dope work going to drop. The rest of my interview with Old Block Hood going to drop. We got some crime scene videos, some blogs, some board videos. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel, man. Now let me get up off this phone because there's a lot of shit going on. It's the homie Truth Tell the Street Reporter.